Hey everyone, since this week's Tidy Tuesday was about cocktails and I like cocktails, I thought I'd have a go at doing it. So I'm going to spend about 30 minutes on this. Uh, I'm just going to kind of talk along as I do it. Done basically zero preparation. You can see all I have here is one R Studio instance. Uh, I've created this new project and I've downloaded the Boston Cocktails dataset from this week. And that's basically everything I've done. So I'm going to have a little bit of an explore and talk about, talk it out aloud as I go. So I like the tidyverse. I think the only thing to notice here is that I'm going to be using the latest development version of dplyr. So if I do anything with dplyr that you haven't seen before, that's probably because it's uh, very, very new. This is the version of dplyr that's going to be released as 1.0.0, hopefully on Friday. So let's get started. Let's load the data in and take a quick look. <laughs> so it looks like each cocktail has a row for each ingredient. So let's just take a look at how many cocktails there are in total. So it looks like there are about 990 cocktails here. So also notice that there's a row ID here. Is that the same as the name? Mm -hmm. Looks like it. Let's just double check that. Um, and how can I double check? How can I tell if there's a one-to-one -one relationship between name and row ID? I feel like there's probably some simple way to make sure that there's no duplicate names. Oh, okay. Let's do. Let's twist this round. I want to group by row. Uh, let's group by name. Summarize IDs in distinct. Row ID, and then I want to filter where IDs is greater than one. Okay, so that was just checking that the, uh, the name and row ID are basically synonymous. So every cocktail I can identify by its name, and that means I can ignore the row ID in the future. Okay, so let's take a look. Uh, now that we've done that, let's just have a look at how many ingredients each cocktail has. So one little trick here is I'm going to count this count. So I've counted up. This tells me the number of rows for each name. And now I want to count like how many rows in here have five ingredients. So I can count that again. So this is kind of interesting. There are 31 cocktails with one ingredient. Not entirely sure that that is a cocktail. Let's just take a look at that. Oh, and so this tells me the name of them. A uh, slightly better way to do this would be group by name and then filter to find each cocktail that has only one name in it. So brandy and soda, vodka and tonic, vodka and apple juice, stone. So interestingly, I'd say this is suggesting that these ingredients only contain the alcoholic ingredients, so like a brandy and soda or a highball. All these mists probably have other ingredients that are not listed in this, so I'll just have to bear that in mind. I'll make a little comment here. These, co these one ingredient cocktails suggest that non-alcoholic ingredients uh, and then let's take a look at some of those six ingredient cocktails okay no not crazy okay so what did i do here let's just try to make a few notes um uh, name and grow ID equivalent. Yes, they are. 
and then we'll say now ingredients in each cocktail okay which is probably should just have a look at these two ingredient cocktails too because i by and large most cocktails have three ingredients in it as a minimum Yeah, so this is interesting. A Caribbean champagne, which you would assume involves champagne here, just has light rum and creme de banana. And in total, that's a half ounce, which would be a rather small cocktail. Okay, so probably the cocktails with less than three ingredients have other stuff in. Um, I guess the other way to look at that um, would be look at the total volume of each cocktail. So how big is each cocktail? And so to do that, we need to parse this measure column. And it looks like that is just a unit, a, a number, a space, and then a unit. It looks like most of these are ounces. So I could just cocktails, count, measure, and sort that. So it certainly looks like most of them are ounces. We've got one that's for glass, one and a quarter ounces, etc. Okay, so let's uh, take a first pass at this using separate from tidy R. So we want to separate the measure column into an amount and unit. And we're going to separate by space. If I do that, I get a bunch of warnings saying that some had additional pieces, which we actually expect that. And I never quite remember what the arguments do here, but I think that is the extra argument in any extra pieces. I think I just want to merge. Just try that. Maybe that won't quite work, but we'll get us some way there. Hmm. Okay, that didn't quite work because we wanted to merge it from the other direction. Is there some way to do that? Does not look like it. So how else could we do this? So one thing we could do is we could switch from separate to extract. Extract takes a regular expression. It's gonna be a little bit harder to wrangle. So we have to do this in a couple of pieces. Actually, let's just stick with that separate. Let's just leave it as is like this. And then just count what we have in units. Okay, so some of these involve bottles, dashes, we've got these, this problem. It's like one and a half, one and a quarter, one and two thirds, etc. Uh, we've got fresh glass ounces. So mm, splashes and dashes. So maybe what we should do is let's just filter it to find only those that have ounces in them because it looks like that's going to be most of them and since i'm kind of caring about the main volume it doesn't really matter if you've got a splash or a, a dash a slice is probably a garnish and a teaspoon doesn't make much difference so let's just first focus in on all of the ones that have ounces and then let's add a new variable which we'll call Ounces, which I'm just going to use parse, uh, parse number isn't going to work. I'm going to use str replace and a strip off that oz um, for measure, replace that with nothing. Okay, that looks good. So let's just count that to see that in the right direction. Okay, that looks pretty good. So now 
I want to turn these into actual numbers. So how? Oh, I also noticed that's 24 ounces. That's it's going to be an interesting cocktail. Um, I think let's just do some little trick where we do a few replacements. So let's replace half with 0.5. Oops. I'm going to do now in replace Oz. Look at this. 0.5. Okay. And then let's do a quarter with 0.25 and three quarters with 0.75. There's probably some. That didn't work. Oh, we want to optionally place a space in front of them. Seven five. We've got two thirds and one third left. So you can see I'm just doing a bunch of copying and pasting here. I think that's a fine way to begin. Um, and now, oops, we want to do it like this. We want to get those zeros off. I'm just trying to like hack these strings together so I get something that looks like a number, and then. And I can do as dot numeric and I get a warning about some NAs introduced by coercion. I wonder what that is. I bet it's this one which has an extra space there. So I could just add another. Again, I'm just hacking hacking this together. And it made it go away. A little concerned about now why is it still a character? Oops. I to it's there. there we go. Okay, so what did I do? I made a bunch of hacky regular expressions that just replace a possible space followed by a half with 0.5. Did that for a quarter, three quarters, needed an extra hack, one third, two thirds. Uh, if I was doing this in a real analysis, I'd probably spend a little bit more time thinking if there's some elegant, more elegant way of doing this. But uh, then I'd probably extract this out into a function so I could start to like test it a little bit more easily. But this seems to be a, um, Seems to look fairly good. So let's just call this sizes. And then let's just take a look at some of those suspicious sizes, filter sizes, anything like bigger than four ounces, well, three ounces to be honest, is kind of suspicious. Uh, five ounces of fresh lint, mint leaves, that's kind of odd. Okay, so here we do have some that have non-alcohol ingredients, ingredients, grapefruit juice, cold water, water. This is almost certainly a misprint. Four ounces of Angostura bitters. That is something you normally put a couple of dashes in. That's probably a mistake. Hot tea, interesting. Grapefruit juice. So these kind of look plausible. Let's look at the ones that are really big. Uh, so very, make some very large drinks here. Just pull this, pull this guy out, filter, uh, go back original co cocktails, row ID equals equals. <laughs> this is <laughs> clearly must be a bulk. Uh, cocktail because that's a lot of a lot of whiskey and tomato juice. Okay, so that's that's probably gonna be an outlier. Okay, so what I was gonna try and do is trying to find out like some distribution of the sizes of the cocktails. So let's uh, group by the name, and I want to summarize. 
let's just keep the number of ingredients and then we want the total ounces. Let's check that that looks good. That's good, total size. And let's just take a look at that in ggplot, total size. Just gonna do a histogram, so we've got ounces on the x axis, g on histogram. And there's this is just so total size filter. So typically a cocktail would be like a cocktail would be normally about like four ounces. Um so anything over twenty is certainly suspicious. So it looks like we've just got two there, that bloody Scotchman we saw before on a punch, which is often made in bigger quantities. So let's just filter those out. Redraw a histogram. That looks a little better. Let's set the bin width to an ounce. Make a half an ounce. Try a quarter ounce. That's definitely too small. Um, this is kind of whenever you see this sort of sawtooth pattern in your histogram, that's a pretty good sign you made your bin with too small and there's some observations that have a higher resolution than others. So let's stick with a bin width of 0.5. You can see we've got like a lot of large cocktails here. Um, let's see, so total size. Delta. Let's just do anything bigger than six ounces. And then let's see me join that back with the original cocktails. By name. That would just give me all of the cocktails that are here. Um, Looks like these have got, let's just take a look. Again, we've got these five ounces of fresh mint leaves again. Juices, this one's got a bunch of apple cider. Gin and grapefruit. So it looks like most of these involve Gin of some sort. This is unusual. It's just bourbon, <laughs> cold water. Oh, I do not think I would call that a cocktail, let alone a cocktail classic. Um, that simply can't be right. An ounce and a half of almond extract, that would be disgusting. Mm. An ounce of ginger, wow. <laughs> Three ounces of bitters. So I think I think there's clearly quite a lot of data errors in here. Certainly anything with bitters should not have that's just uh, cocktails. Just find everything with bitters in uh, ingredient strip ticked ingredient bitters. Yeah, that's all like that should not be an ounce, that should be probably a dash. So let's actually, let's go back up here and let's filter those out as well. Um, let's make with ounces of bitters is most Yeah, 
add it into our Mm -hmm. Certainly gave me much confidence in the quality of this data. But anyway, let's run that again. Let's calculate the total sizes. Look at our histogram. Oops, I did the wrong way around, didn't I? I want to say not bitters. Yeah, that's better. Well, they've still got a lot of large cocktails. These probably primarily have juice in them. I wonder if there's some way to weed that out. I guess we could go the other. We could, um, instead of looking at this total size of a cocktail, maybe we could do... You could group it by ingredient. I'm going to do the same thing. We don't want the sum, we want the average sizes. Let's just filter it to make sure we've got like, I don't know, five. And let's sort it so we see the biggest ones first. Chilled champagne, water, orange juice, cranberry juice, light cream. Again, we've got Peychaud's bitters. Why isn't that filtered out? Is this not case insensitive? And we should make this case insensitive. Rerun that. Let's come back down here. There we go. That Peshad's bitters is gone. Let's just show a few more. And we've got some nice case sensitivity problems. So let's just drop that. So chilled champagne, water, cranberry gross, light cream, bourbon, whiskey, orange juice, fresh orange juice. So we could then use this if we wanted to kind of construct some of the non-alcoholic ingredients. Uh, do I want to do that now? Let's take this off again. Call it NA, non-alcoholic. We've got, well, actually, it's not really non-alcoholic, it's more non-spirit. Uh, non Chilled champagne, water, orange juice. Cranberry juice. Light cream, if desired. Fresh orange juice. Orange juice. Okay, and then so now we could say and filter ingredients. Not in non spirit. Run this through again. Still got a lot of large cocktails because I seem to have missed a lot of cranberry juice, pineapple juice. Well, lime juice I wouldn't count as a mixer. 
Look at this again. You can start to fill. I should move this up further. So I don't know, I kind of, <laughs> I think I've explored this avenue as much as I want to right now. So we did a bunch of kind of data cleaning, hacking around to turn the ounces into something numeric, pulling off some of the things that I, I would not characterize as being the primary ingredients of a cocktails. We still, we have these, these um, cocktails, which you probably pull out, which make more than one serving. We've got a bunch of other odd looking cocktails that are surprisingly large. Um, we need a little bit of exploration, just looking at the average size of ingredients, trying to find the ingredients that um, weirdest. So this is probably something I should have uh, started off with. So I left earlier, what are the primary ingredients? So let's just do cocktails count ingredients or equals true. Powdered sugar, yikes. And you can see that there's quite, if we wanted to really analyze this, there's quite a lot of mismatches here so we could i mean one way if we wanted to standardize this we could create like a triple with like name and standard name okay, that fresh lemon juice lemon juice Actually, i guess i should match the case of what's in there Actually, no, it'd be better to do something like this. Cock, uh, we should do this to lower. There we go, that's a little better. Juice of a lemon should also be lemon juice. Simple syrup, light lemon, fresh lime juice. Lime juice, I need lemon juice, be quiet. Okay, so let's just, I'm not gonna do this too much. Uh, I've got a standard. Just run that. And now I wanna somehow replace these. And so I wonder if I could use as a new function in dply 1.0 quarter rows update. Mm -hmm. I think I could do this. So let's just see if I can do this. Cocktails. I want to just select out the name, the row ID, and the ingredient. Actually, I'm going to call this, rename this to ingredient. And I'm also going to, well, I'm not really with this, isn't a great place to do it, but make these all lowercase to make my life a little easier. But, And then I only want to find the ones that have a match. Oh, I don't. Right join on the standard ingredients. Let's 
standard name. I'm actually going to and then I want to rename. Let's just do this. Okay. So what I have now is basically a data set of changes that I want to apply. So row ID and ingredient number identify which row I want to modify. And then I want to change the ingredient in that. So I'm going to call this ingredient changes. And then I want to do cocktails rows update ingredient changes got to run that key values are not unique well that's strange so cocktails count row id ingredient number filter index one. Okay, those are up. Oops. Gradient. Hmm. Oh, I forgot to supply which variables I want to join by. Uh, which one, which variables I want to key by or use to combine these two data frames. I want to use row ID and ingredient number line. Now I could verify that it works just by recounting the ingredients. And you can see now I've got just lemon juice and just lime juice. That's nice. And let's just look at the top 20. So now I could see if there's any more. So we've got juice of a lime, juice of a lime. We're going to call that lime juice two. Run that, run that, run that again. Juice of a lime is gone. We've got more lime juices. Brandy. And I could keep just peeling this back more and more and more to, to standardize this still further. I mean, well, bitters, like if you're just using bitters, that's probably just means Angostura bitters. So combine those together. So what am I doing here? I've got a data frame that I'm using to do a little bit of data cleaning. On the left hand side, uh, I've got this variable, which is as it appears in the data as is. On the right hand side, I have what I want to standardize it to. And then I'm going to use this new rows update function, which I do that first by generating basically a table that has all of the changes I want to make at once. And so I do that by just selecting out the variables. I've got two variables that identify each row the row number, or the, I could also use, there's no reason actually not to use the name here. Um, that would make it a little easier to see what's going on. And then the ingredient number, and then this is now the new value. And then I use row update, which is gonna change that data frame to replace the existing value of ingredient for these specific rows. And then I just check that it's done what I've expected using count and then if I was going to keep doing this for real analysis, I'll do this, you know, quite a few more times until I was much happier with the, with the quality of the data. Now, obviously in this data set, we've already seen like quite a few data quality issues. So I think if you wanted to do like any modeling of this data, you would first have to do like a, a, a bunch of cleaning up. The other thing that I think that's, that's missing, um, maybe we can get to it if there's cocktails category. It's just some like rough classification of like what sort of cocktail is it? Is it a shaken cocktail, a stirred cocktail, like a Collins or a fizz? Um, so you could start to like kind of group these in, but these categories are, look pretty terrible to be honest. Like these categories, I would say just by the, 
the primary spirit in the drink, which you could determine yourself, of course. Um, that would be another interesting thing to do now, actually confirm that. So for each cocktail, find which ingredient has the highest in the ounces and then compare that to its category. But then most of them are just in this cocktail classics, um, which is clearly just some kind of like catch all and not terribly interesting. So I hope that was kind of, you know, you learned something in that. I showed off a few new deep layer things just because of the top of my head. Uh, and I'll put the code up in a link somewhere, which I'll include at the end of this video. Thanks for watching. Bye.